Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on the levels of measurement in SPSS. In counseling research, we recognize four levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. And you can see here I have three variables. These are fictitious data. I have three variables loaded in the data view, nominal, ordinal, and scale. And if I move over to the variable view, under measure, you can see nominal, ordinal, scale. So even though we have nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio as distinct levels of measurement, SPSS only recognizes three, nominal, ordinal, and scale, because there's no distinction drawn between interval and ratio in SPSS. They're both referred to as scale. So taking a look back at the data view, I'll start with the nominal variable here. And of course, this contains nominal data. In this case, four levels that you might have in an experimental research design. So you have CBT, group counseling, psychodynamic, and treatment as usual. So these represent four conditions, four levels, that a participant may be assigned to in a research study. So these levels cannot be ranked. And that's why they're specified here as nominal. They are all simply categories, but there's no way to rank them from lowest to highest. If I only had two levels here, say just the CBT and group counseling, that would still be a nominal variable, but we refer to it as a dichotomous variable as well. It would be both nominal and dichotomous. Moving over to the next variable, which I've named ordinal, and it's at the ordinal level of measurement, you can see you have data in here consistent with what we would typically see in a Likert scale. In this particular Likert scale, uh, at the one extreme we have strongly agree, and at the other extreme we have strongly disagree, and you can see when I move over to the numeric view, they are ranked one through six. This is a little easier to see in the variable view. If I go to values, you can see one is associated with strongly agree, two with agree, all the way down to six, which is associated with strongly disagree. So these six values can be ranked, but we don't know the distance between the points. That is, we can't establish an equal interval. We're not sure that distance is equal because the distance can vary for each participant. So for one participant, the distance between a, a strongly agree response and an agree response may be different than the distance between agree and somewhat agree. We don't know. It's variable. It could be different for each participant. So we can rank these data, but we can't establish an equal interval between them, between each data point. Therefore, we refer to this as the ordinal level measurement. Another example that I could use here, if we go back to data view, we have this uh, nominal level data, CBT, group, psychodynamic, and treatment as usual, and say that we had for the ordinal variable an instance where we ask the participants to rank these treatments from the most helpful to the least helpful. Well, for some participants, for example, uh, CBT and psychodynamic, they may rank these, uh, maybe psychodynamic is one and CBT is two, but they may feel that both treatments were very useful for them, very helpful for them. Or in some instances, they may rank psychodynamic one and CBT two, but they felt that psychodynamic was much more helpful. We don't know. We can't establish that there's an equal interval between those scores. So therefore, it would still be ordinal. It would be ranked data. 
So moving on now to the scale level measurement, the scale variable here. You see I have different values loaded here for these 20 records. And let's assume that these values come from a measurement designed to capture a participant's level of functioning. Well, functioning is not typically a construct that we think of that can have a true zero, meaning we wouldn't expect a participant to respond that they are not functioning at all. They would have to be functioning somewhat to complete the instrument. So that's not a counseling construct that we think of in terms of having a true zero. So in this case, we would think of this variable as being measured the interval level of measurement, meaning we can establish an equal distance between the points. So let's assume this is measured on a t-score, which would be a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. So in this instance, we could establish an equal interval. Right? So what that means is, say that for a value of uh, 30, we examine this value in terms of functioning, and then we take a look at 37, which is seven points higher. And then we look at the value 50, and the value 57, which is seven points higher. We would say that the functioning increase from 30 to 37 is the same amount of functioning increase that you would see from 50 to 57. So each one point on the scale represents the same amount of increase in functioning, regardless of where that point is on the scale. So if you're moving from 29 to 30, or you're moving from 68 to 69, it would not matter. That one point represents the same amount of improvement. There's an equal interval between the points. But in this case, there's no true zero. There's no absence of functioning. So this is at the interval level. Now again, there's no distinction in SPSS between interval and ratio. But to give you an example here of ratio, a ratio level measurement is one where you have an equal interval and a true zero. So say instead of functioning, I was examining the number of times our participant reported symptoms for a month. So in this instance, again, we have equal interval, meaning if they report that they had 30 episodes, 30 times where symptoms were present, that would be seven fewer reports than 37, just as 50 would represent seven fewer reports than 57. So every report has the same value and there's the same distance between reports, one. But you could also have a true zero. Somebody could report zero episodes, zero reports of symptoms during the month, and that would represent a true zero. In that instance, you have a ratio level of measurement. Now, it's important to note in SPSS that the levels of measurement are not automatically assigned. As a researcher, you have to determine the level of measurement for any specific variable and then specify that level in the measure column here under the variable view. And also, when analyzing data, for example, here, uh, if I go to general linear model and univariate, you have to know what's acceptable for a dependent variable and independent variable, or a fixed factor here, as referred to, uh, or a covariate, or for that matter, any of the list boxes in any of the dialogues for the different statistics. So it's important to be able to recognize a variable as belonging to one of the different levels of measurement and specifying that. And then of course, loading that correctly into the various dialogues used for the statistics.
I hope you found this video on the levels of measurement in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.